point in time, it might be possible to connect with Katerina in Kiev, and I will defer to my technological experts to see if we might be able to make that connection. We have a bit of time left. If the uh, participants here might have some specific questions, and clearly we will not have an enough time to ask all the questions and get all the information that would be useful to us to structure whatever assistance we can provide in the future. But um, I do think we have a few minutes here, perhaps 10 or so, when we would welcome um, questions. For Katarina. I think everyone's sort of uh, no, this moment, moment in time. Does anyone have anything that they would like to ask uh, Katerina? Oh. Um, dear colleagues, thank you very much for the support. And uh, I, I see also some messages in chat and uh, I just would like to, mm, to say that uh, it's, uh, it's very, uh, it, it's a honor for me uh, to take part in this meeting. And um, I hope that the international cooperation uh, is the basic uh, for uh, any kind of renovations and any kind of uh, establishing new standards because a number of countries uh, need it. And uh, we try to um, use this, uh, uh, let's say it window, window of possibilities to uh, re-establish all the system of our uh, cultural heritage, heritage management. Uh, so um, unfortunately, the circumstances of this uh, actions are very tragic, uh, but uh, we, we need to think about the future. And that is why uh, I'm here and many of my colleagues are uh, trying to take part in a number of uh, international meetings uh, all over the world. Uh, to. Uh, made this uh, cooperation and made this new kind of, uh, let's say, relationships in our communities uh, to establish them. Uh, so please um, give me your questions. And uh, uh, if you need uh, to, new, to know something about Ukraine and about its cultural heritage, or uh, you have some uh, thoughts about it, uh, we will appreciate it very much. So just please uh, contact us. I, I will, can also leave uh, my contacts here in chat and um, I will be very happy to contact mm -hmm. with all of you and to, um, to make our cultural heritage management uh, better and uh, to save this heritage for future generations. Thank you very much. We would, we would like very much to be able to collaborate and cooperate in a, you know, in an effective kind of a way um, and of course, we can be in contact with like most international. Um, you know, we, we, we can go through the, uh, the uh, person who has been uh, identified as the liaison. We can do that. And I think also we're going to try very, very, very hard to solicit input from some of the heritage and cultural management institutions in the United States, the Smithsonian, of course, you've probably spoken with already. Um, perhaps the, the Getty, uh, but there are many others. Um, we have a very, you know, varied membership in U.S. Um, I am sure that this is just the beginning of a continuing collaboration. And uh, as time goes on, you know, having this briefing that we've had this evening and beginning to get a sense of the scope and depth of the devastation and I don't think and I've seen some videos that portray that more directly than I'm not sure that anybody is ready at this moment in time to, to absorb all of that but I've seen them and they're they're, they're, they're amazing and, I, and, 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 I, and as I understand it you're you are there at the museum and there are very few people there to assist you because the men have all, all gone off to fight and the women with children have, you know, they're in a vulnerable position, so, so that they're leaving. Uh, and that's the way it is right now. Uh, you've lost much, much staff. Um, I guess, you know, part of it is what do you need right now? 
what can we do to help marshal and organize that support? And over the long run, you know, how can we provide um, specialized expertise that would be that would be useful? One one thing that's been suggested to me is that we identify organizations in various places, such as organizations in the United States. It could be places where some of your um, conservation experts could find shelter and could work with people and, 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 and really focus on the sorts of treatments that could be, that could be useful in, in the future. We're talking about over the next few months and over the next few years. So we do have a membership that includes people from these various organizations. And I'm hoping that this is just the beginning of reaching out to them and then trying to coordinate their effort and provide the support that we can. Anybody else have some questions? Uh, yeah, like I, I see some questions in chat. If, if uh, possible, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you very much, Mr. Kammer. Uh, so, um, what is the status of most of the major museum collections in Ukraine? So, for now, uh, all the um, major collections are safe. Uh, we have provided it with an evacuation processes inside Ukraine uh, for now, uh, but uh, now uh, the most important of them are safe. But of course, it is very difficult uh, now to uh, provide an evacuation for the collections from Lugansk or Donetsk region. We will, uh, we, we did it uh, partly, but unfortunately it is not possible to relocate um, half of the country and uh, half of the museums uh, to another part of the country so we did our best i hope uh, but uh, of course uh, some collections and some part of collections are left uh, now uh, also under occupation and it's very difficult situation for us because we knew that uh, the collections and the museums will be included into the Russian uh, system of uh, museums. So we'll see what happened um, within the next few weeks. Um, and it will be also a very difficult situation for southern uh, and eastern part of Ukraine, uh, where the, a new wave of the uh, Russian activities will take place, we're afraid. Uh, so uh, how do we make a direct financial contribution is uh, in the most effective way today. Uh, and, um, and thank you for all this um, good wishes. And so similar question as above, above uh, what organization or other means do you find best get support to you? Thank you for these questions. Uh, so um, I will provide uh, Ico Monsieurs uh, with the contacts um, of uh, two uh, foundations. Uh, first, it's a, a official beneficiary account uh, at the Ministry of Culture. And the second one is the, our partners uh, from NGO sectors, which uh, were mentioned by Miron Stachik, Igor Poshevaldo, for example. Uh, that is the colleagues uh, associated with the ministry and we are working with them, uh, for example, for the uh, evacuation of objects or uh, getting packing materials or financial support for uh, our specialists. So I will uh, send uh, the contacts uh, and the bank details uh, to ICOM US uh, for this kind of support, if you do not mind. Um, so, in the, in the ministry of in the ministry of culture and the, any other organization documenting and the evidence, uh, yes, we do uh, the ministry and some other organization as well, and we will uh, try to find international partners uh, like Newtonian and the other institutions who can uh, help us with this, for example, satellite photos and other materials. So, so we do, and uh, as I mentioned in, in my presentation, uh, we established a platform uh, which even uh, citizens can bring out the information. But of course, uh, we will collect uh, the information more detailed uh, just after the liberation, because now uh, in the number of regions, we uh, even do not have, uh, have an access uh, to the number of cities. 
for example, uh, just two days ago, Chernigiv was open because it was uh, bombing so hard that it was not possible to go inside the city and even to uh, to go, um, I don't know, 100 kilometers before it was completely impossible because the uh, many villages were occupied and uh, the bombing was was bombardments was uh, were awful uh, so now we can uh, get to chernigiv so we will try to collect information from this region and from some other region in the eastern part of ukraine mm, uh, but of course we will see uh, the whole picture after the war because its damages are, are very hard for now. And I, I didn't mention in my presentation, for example, archaeological sites and uh, a number of other objects, it's uh, completely impossible to uh, to see them now because uh, a number of them are just, are, for example, some uh, archaeological uh, objects of uh, medieval time uh, was a base uh, for Russian uh, army uh, units. So what happened there, we, we even can't imagine for now. We will just uh, go there after our army uh, when the territory will be safe. So the situation is like that. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for all questions and for all, um, uh, all this uh, wishes here in chat. Um, I have a question uh, on the images before the war. What type of images are you looking for? It could be satellite images first, uh, because uh, uh, we do not uh, have, um, I also have mentioned it, it in my presentation. Uh, we uh, will reestablish a national platform for uh, cultural heritage object registration, including immovable uh, objects. So uh, we will collect uh, different kinds of this satellite photos uh, to understand the situation before the start of war and, and just to, to compare it, uh, compare it in, uh, with the situation now. And we will check the changes. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just mention that your your last point is that is eminently doable these days. It, we, there are data sets that that, that we work with, with with that kind of technology, and believe me, it's there. So we can we can do, we can do that. We can do that. We can. Uh, I think there. The Smithsonian is working with an organization, Northern Virginia. We should really be in contact with them to see how we might participate and collaborate. But certainly, there are data sets with organizations are available from organizations that we're typically working with that, that would be so happy to uh, to assist with that. We're just gonna have to figure out a program, a working group to, to, to you know, to address that. That's doable, that's doable. So, so um, you know, this is the beginning and I think we all have a sense, a much stronger sense of the situation and the, and the immediate requirements and the long-term requirements. Um, you know, we're, I am personally, and Kate just said this too, personally moved by your bravery. Thank you. I mean, you're, you're really uh, protecting, you know, Ukrainian heritage, but you're also an example for everybody, everyone. You know, you, you're putting yourself on the line and that takes a lot. And we all appreciate that so much. And it's probably about three o'clock in the morning in Ukraine, is it not? That's what I was going to say. It's almost three in the morning. So Thank you. let us stay in touch. Let's find ways to lay, lay down lines of communication. I think Milford is signaling. He's from, we're from the same part of uh, the, the uh, Western part of the United States. So this is like a surfer signal which I think means cool or something, right? Milford, is, is that what you're saying? No, okay, what do you want to say? Milford. Means, that means good luck and peace be with you. Let's, we're all on board with that. Good luck and peace to us all, okay? Peace to Ukraine, peace to the world. Thank you so much, thank you. We'll be in touch. All right, guys, we have our marching orders. Let's do it, shall we? Shall we? Thank you. My feet are saying. Thank you. Thank you all.